adventure. What is up, party people? Welcome to the Drew Dillman YouTube channel. I'm coming to you just for the voice this week because I am not in my normal recording studio. And we are at the Core 4 gravel race in Iowa City, Iowa. It's a pretty cool race. The idea behind it, kind of similar to the rule of three race. No road untouched was the, was the slogan. And so we're gonna hit some B roads like this one. And to be quite honest, I didn't know what a B road was until I pre-rode the course with Chase Wark. That's the homie right there to my right in the tan kit driftless kit um, this first B road section was about five minutes a mile and a half and I averaged about a 361 normalized power I ended up going to the front because I just wanted to be able to see the line that's gonna be the that's gonna be the pattern throughout uh, this race is I'm, I'm going to be leading the off-road sectors because I just prefer to see the trail ahead of me Another uh, chunky little B road right here. The cool thing about this local race is they had a freaking helicopter, bro. So check out this awesome helicopter footy. Again, running the arrow bars. This race was arrow bar legal. Me and Chase Work both had arrow bars. There he goes. I had attacked and my computer said to turn left and I wasn't sure if it was onto that dirt road which ended up just being a driveway or if it was onto this road and it ended up being this road so I slowed down to try to make that turn and Chase Work just buzzed right by me. Um, the first hour of this race was pretty fun between me and Chase and a couple other guys just kind of attacking and counterattacking. At one point there were a couple guys up the road and Chase looks at me and says hey you want a bridge? And I'm like, who, who says that? Who says that? Uh, and so I surged, thinking me and him were going to bridge across. And I look back, and I'm by myself. And he had just let me go by myself. And so I'm like, well, I don't want to bridge by myself. So I sat up, and then he bombed past me. And he bridges up to the group solo. So here I am, stuck back here in the main group. And I'm like, all right, I got to get to this Chase group. Because Chase is in that... Uh, attacking group and Eno was in that group another strong guy and I know those two work well together so I don't want them to be out the front for too long but for this anyway. bridge up to that break ended up being about four and a half minutes at a normalized of 442 so a really big match that I had to burn to get up to that chase group and here I am back up into that uh, breakaway there's six of us most impressive part about this breakaway is that there was a 15 year old kid named Mason who was in the breakaway. When I was bridging up to the uh, front group, uh, he was on my wheel and I was like, are you kidding me? Like, this kid's impressive. This was that really, really chunky off-road sector, super muddy that when me and Chase pre-rode, I literally had to walk this entire section. You can see these tire marks from a car, but my bike got completely clogged with mud. But luckily, two days later, it was pretty dry, and uh, we rode it without any any hesitation. We're on to the gravel pathway here. Eno from the Mazda team is on the front. Chase is going to put in a little bit of a dig here just to pick up the pace. Like I said in my Dust Bowl video, I kind of feel bad because in the Mid-South video from the first race of this season, I called Pace and McKelvin out for chopping a grass turn like that. And it seems like nowadays that's just the standard uh, to chop turns through the grass as you just saw Chase Warp do that. Now we're just all cheaters. We all cut the course. And I guess that's fair game. Me and Chase are off the front. I had attacked when Chase was on the front. Um, you know, anytime you can attack when your biggest competitor, ooh, 
ooh, ooh, ooh. almost crashed right there. That was close. Anytime you can attack when your biggest competitor is on the front, that's good because then they're going to have to burn a, a bigger match to have to chase you and catch you. So I was off the front for maybe five minutes solo, and then Chase bridged up to me. And now it's just me and him. We're rolling into uh, this first mountain bike sector. It was supposed to be like, I think, eight or nine miles, but they ended up chopping about half of it off um, because of wetness. I started to put in a pretty big effort going up this hill because I wanted to lead into the trail and Chase was like, hey man, I'm not going to try to pass you. I'm like, dude, you're way too nice. Um, he was on mountain bike tires. That's the biggest difference between our bikes. He was on mountain bike tires and I was on a uh, 45 challenge getaway. So just kind of a standard gravel tire. And so he's probably going to have a little bit more traction through me on these off-road sections, but I have a little bit more, I guess you could say, mountain bike skills than he does, um, and I think he would admit that as well. Um, I can rip trails a little faster than he can, but with him being on mountain bike tires, that does kind of equalize it, and so uh, I was going pretty hard through this section trying to get a gap on him, and at a, some, at a few points I had a little bit of a gap, but then I would make a little mistake and he'd come right back up to me. He told me after the race that this was the, the part of the race that I that I was starting to gap him on a few little sections here. Um, but yeah, that, that mountain bike trail section only ended up being like four or five miles. And then a lot of the day was just me and Chase in our aero bars. We had only been off the front for maybe 30 minutes, and the moto had said we already put three minutes into the guys behind us, and I thought that was pretty crazy. I got the recipe, never gonna let any up be the best of me. Thought it was distance, but haters is next to me. Talk to the spirit, you know I've been heavenly company definitely. And if you guys haven't been following along, uh, the stable cyclist, JP, he's interviewed both me and Chase on his podcast. Um, and through that, uh, and through the Bonk Bros podcast, me and Chase have actually got to become pretty good friends. We're actually even doing a weekly Bible study together, but, but like our friendship has really blossomed over the last few months, and I'm excited about it, and uh, yeah, I think we've just really uh, hit it off as, as good friends. we got a lot in common, and we our personalities just really seem to jive really well. They say you ain't about it. Tell them that you finna make it, but they doubt it. But you rose like the flower. Tell me what it's like to live with superpowers. Uh, you see, we almost took out that dude's little white dog. I don't know what he was doing. I think he was just doing some random yoga and stretching in the middle of the trail. Uh, but good for him. He's out here running uh, early on a Saturday morning with his little pup. That's good. You gotta hit the uh, you gotta hit the whoop de whoops because that's fun. A lot of bridges in this race. Um, this little trail section was kind of like an intercity trail system, so it's not as rugged as that first trail section. This one was mostly flat with just a ton of turns and a ton of bridges, and so this one was a little bit harder. Like I wasn't gonna gap chase on that section because it was dead flat and it wasn't super technical. It was just like turning. We actually went off the course right there. They had a big metal fence up um, and I thought the fence was to divide people going one way versus the other. But actually I think we were supposed to go on the other side of that fence. So it was kind of funny. I was like, yo, did we go the wrong way? And they were like, yeah, but that's okay. No big deal. <laughs> Here we are in the aero bars, just bombing fast again. Uh, a couple more B road sections where it's just uh, the craziest thing about the the B the B roads was the tire marks and the tire treads that we had to avoid. Uh, there were definitely a couple close calls where I, I think on this one I hit a rut and I kind of go sideways and it was a little sketchy. Right on 
almost got me. This is the last trail sector. It felt a lot like a cross course. Um, it had uh, some grassy sections, some sandy sections, a lot of turns, a couple straightaways where you could get on the gas. And so I kind of felt like, okay, maybe I could gap chase through this section. And so I was trying to pin it. And then um, after um, the race, he told me that, like I told him I was trying to go hard and he kind of chuckled and was like, oh, I couldn't tell. Uh, so I don't know if he was just screwing with me or what, but it, it sounds like I wasn't gonna drop him there. Like he was feeling pretty good in that section. We're pretty far into the race now. I think we're, you know, less than 20 miles from the finish. Just a couple more B road sectors. There's no more trail sectors. So um, knowing that I have a better off road ability than he does, I'm probably not going to be able to gap him through any of these off road sectors. And so, yeah, it's probably just going to end up being some kind of like one of us is going to attack and either one of us is going to get dropped. You can see him going a little sideways through some mud right there on this B road. I let the gap open because I saw him slide right there and again like I said earlier I really wanted to be able to just see the line ahead of me again there's that helicopy that's the helicopy footage dude that's the look how cool that is what kind of local race gives such good footage wow a helicopter amazing I don't think I've ever had helicopter footage um, because I've never been at the front of a lifetime event and, and those usually have a helicopter so it's pretty cool. Yeah, there's that gap. I can tell that right here, Chase was pinning it, and I was pretty gassed. You can see, like, he's gonna stand up and get on the pedals, um, but I'm able to hold his wheel. Yeah, and so I'm back on his wheel. Uh, we're back in the aero bars. We are kind of thinking, like, I'm thinking, like, okay, conserve. I know there's one good climb towards the end of the race. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna whack it pretty hard on that climb. But he had other plans. So he went to the front on this last B-Road sector. I remember this one having a lot of water on it. It's the very last B-Road. He goes to the front and then I'm gonna go hard to try and counter attack him because I know that he just went really hard. So if I can counter attack him when he's hurting, maybe I can gap him. So for six and a half minutes between his attack and my attack, normalized power of 352, which is just about FTP for me. And that also includes the little bit of gravel in between those two B-Road sectors. And so here we are turning. We're about to roll into that final hard climb. I remember pre-riding this and thinking like, okay, if we're together right here, I need to attack to try and gap him because it's only a couple miles to the finish. And so we were soft pedaling, just staring at each other. And so eventually I'm like, all right, we got to pick up the pace. And so I attacked and for 30 seconds, I averaged 560 watts, but he was able to hold onto my wheel for that 30 seconds. And then right here, he kind of like opens up a little of a gap and I'm like, okay, well, if he's gonna open up a gap and I attack with that gap, it's only gonna extend. And so I attacked again for about 25 seconds at a 650 average power. I dropped straight into the arrow bars to try to maximize the arrow gains and get that gap. But he, he comes right back to me. I honestly don't know how I'm gonna be. Did I get across the and it's I couldn't tell if he was messing with me or not. He attacks, he literally screams, Hail Mary. And had he not screamed Hail Mary, I don't know, him screaming Hail Mary kind of told me like, all right, I think I got this. And so I let him dangle out, um, you know, just a, a second or two ahead of me. He's looking back. I want him to think that I'm suffering because then as soon as we hit this last little climb, this little climb goes into the last turn, I want to pass him with as much momentum as possible so that he can't get on my wheel. So I come around him and then I just surge as hard as I can so that he can't get on my wheel. Because I was a little nervous that with the mountain bike tires, he might be able to stay on my wheel and pass me through this last kind of cycle across section of the race. But here you go. Uh, this is me climbing up the final, final climb on the cycle across section. I stood up and just powered it all the way to the top. I didn't look back to see how close he was. I just wanted to make sure I gave it everything I had to make sure I had it wrapped up. And uh, that was that. I think the gravel beef is settled. Uh, I, I've smoked him. Like, where he's not even in the shot right now. Where was he? I don't, I don't know. Oh, the beef is settled. Yeah.
It's on. Hey, Drew. 